Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says it's time for Israelis to elect a new leader, labeling Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu an obstacle to peace. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Megani reports. In an unusually direct appeal, Schumer called for new elections in Israel, saying Netanyahu has lost his way. By allowing his political survival to take the precedence over the best interests of Israel. Which are now being stifled by what Schumer says is a governing vision stuck in the past. Senate GOP counterpart Mitch McConnell immediately responded. Israel is not a colony of America. And says the U.S. can either respect Israel's decisions or disrespect its democracy at the White House and State Department. We know the leader uh, Schumer feels strongly about this. I'm certainly let him speak to it and to his comments. These are statements made by Senator Schumer, not by uh, the uh, Biden administration. Okay. Spokesman John Kirby and Matthew Miller tried to stay out of it, noting the administration's focused on making sure Israel can both protect itself and Gaza's civilians. Sagar Magani, Washington. Russian officials say Ukraine has fired at least eight missiles at the Belgorod border region, killing two people and wounding 12. Kiev's forces apparently are keeping up their efforts to disrupt Russian life and rattle the Kremlin on the eve of Russia's presidential election, which is taking place amid a ruthless crackdown on dissent. It was not possible to independently verify Thursday's report by Russian officials. The Ukrainian assaults on Russian territory in recent days have come as Russian President Vladimir Putin has sought to persuade Russians to keep him in power against a backdrop of what he says are foreign threats to the country and as the Ukraine war stretches into its third year. For additional stories, visit voanews.com. This is VOA News. As the evening prayer sounded across Gaza's rubble, the Abu Rizek family broke their days fast with a shared meal in the wreckage of their home, sadly recalling all they had lost in Israel's military campaign since last year's Muslim Holy Month. Lauren Anthony from Reuters reports. As the evening prayer echoes across rubble-strewn Gaza, the Abu Rizek family break their days fast. The Muslim Holy Month of Ramadan looks very different for them this year. Usually, families gather with friends and neighbors to eat, pray, and celebrate together. But now, the Abu Rizek family sit in the wreckage of their home, having scraped together enough food for iftar, the sunset breakfast after a day without sustenance. Um Mahmoud Abu Rizek recalls all they have lost in Israel's military campaign. Last Ramadan was great, but this year it's not. A lot of things are not there anymore. My sisters, my family, our house got destroyed. The UN has warned that at least 576,000, that's one quarter of the population, are on the brink of famine. Lauren Anthony from Reuters. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has appointed his longtime economic advisor to be the next prime minister in the face of U.S. pressure to reform the Palestinian Authority as part of Washington's post-war vision for Gaza. Mohammed Mustafa, a U.S.-educated economist and political independent, will head a technocratic government in the Israeli-occupied West Bank that could potentially potentially administer Gaza ahead of eventual statehood. But those plans face major obstacles, including strong opposition from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. An appeals court finds an ex-Trump White House official convicted of contempt must report to prison. AP correspondent Jackie Quinn reports. A federal appeals court in Washington says Peter Navarro cannot remain free. While he challenges his conviction on charges, he refused to cooperate with a congressional investigation into the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Navarro was found guilty of defying a subpoena for documents and a deposition and has been ordered to report to prison by March 19th. He's the second Trump aide sentenced to prison. Advisor Steve Bannon, who went before a different judge, was allowed to remain free pending his appeal. I'm Jackie Quinn. The Somali extremist group Al-Shabaab says its fighters have attacked a hotel in the capital Mogadishu. Al-Shabaab said on its Telegram channel that its fighters managed to penetrate the SYL Hotel, which is located not far from the presidential palace in a normally secure part of Mogadishu. The hotel is patronized by government officials. There was no immediate word on casualties. Al-Shabaab, which opposes Somalia's federal government, is responsible for many lethal attacks on hotels and other places over the years.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.